Hey coaches, so I'm ready to get started on this and I think you're going to enjoy um, some of the things that I came up with here and um, so let's get started right away. So one of the cool things, one of the strategies that I uh, learned from um, Coach Canada as I'm watching this very first play of the game, what he's done here is he has uh, gone by gone to segmenting his shifts. Now, a lot of coaches, I know myself in particular, when I think of shifting, I think you start in one formation and you shift to the next one. Everybody moves. Um, but Coach Canada has has a, a, an interesting strategy where instead of shifting everybody at the same time, he's going to shift one player um, one spot at a time. And in this sense, he actually gets three different looks um, at uh, Clemson's defense on the very first play. And this is this is invaluable if you think about it as an offensive coordinator. The first thing you want to know in a game is how are they lining up? How are they going to play us? Well, if you can um, create a shift and segment it so that you can see um, two or even three different looks or identify two or three different things in the very first play alone, then that's going to dramatically help you um, with your play calling um, for the rest of the game, or at least for the next couple plays. And it, it isn't a bad idea to do that, you know, every couple series as, as you're coming out or maybe again at halftime and just see, are they still playing us the same? Are we getting the same looks um, according to the same formations? So I'll show you how he does this here. So this is a balanced formation. So as soon as they line up, um, you know, I'm sure he's going to take a quick snapshot. His coach is going to take a quick look, draw up, um, or take a picture of how they're lined up against this front here. And this is a balanced front okay so we've got center guard tackle tight end center guard tackle um, and a wing okay so um, you've got all gaps defended um, three potential blockers to each side so a defense should be pretty balanced you get a look at what's their balanced look here all right then he's going to shift the tight end over to the right side and he's going to unbalance it a little bit Okay, so now you have a tight end and the fullback off to the same side. So you got one, two, three, four, and then just two on the opposite side. So now he's going to see how do they line up when we unbalance to one side. Okay, um, and obviously if they don't shift or adjust, you know, you got to start running to that unbalanced side because you have numbers and you have an alignment advantage. Okay, um, so he takes a look at that really quickly at the unbalanced look and he's going to shift back to um, the opposite side so now he's going back to an even set okay but he's also now getting a look um, at the tight end to the field okay so this is the final look right here okay and I haven't talked about this motion yet but this is the final front look that he's taking a look at here so it's a tight end one side um, and a wing to the op to the uh, opposite side Okay, but now he's now you're taking a look at a wing back without anyone outside here versus earlier a wing back with receivers outside. Okay, so this is a trips look. How do they adjust pass passing game to the trips? So everybody on deck is getting a different look at something. Okay, the secondary is looking is going to get a look at uh, trips, and then they're going to look at um, going to get a look at what do they do if we have a covered up player? Okay. Um, the tight end is not eligible. Do they still keep a man over him, or or do they release somebody and um, and and stay balanced? Um, the last thing that I noticed that I thought was pretty cool is the Z motions in. Okay, so this is their third movement <clears throat> and a motion where he's conti going to continue to move. Um, tells the tells the offense what kind of coverage are they in? Okay, um, because you can't. If, if you're in man coverage, you got to run with that guy. Once you've called out your man and he motions, you stay with him. That's a basic man co uh, man defense concept um, that that defense defenses are um, set on. Okay, now maybe they could call a quick shift right here, but it's very unlikely that um, they're going to do that and still be able to be in man to man. Okay, so then as far as the actual play goes, a very simple play, first play of the game. You want to keep things super simple for everybody. All right, you've got a gap down um, pass protection here, hinging, uh, hinge and drop backside, um, forming this nice wall right here, um, uh, kind of a backside pocket here, basically making it impossible for anyone to come around to the outside and get a hit on the quarterback. Um, halfback is going to 
uh, take uh, anybody coming off the edge. Okay, so he's got we've got A, B, C, D gap. He's got D gap, and everybody else has their gap inside or gap backside. Um, the passing route combination again is very simple. Um, I'd call this a cover two beater, um, but it also works well against man coverage, which is what they show that they are in um, is man to man because. As the X runs his corner route and the Z runs his out route, um, each defender is covering their man. Okay, the free safety comes up to cover the out and the corner stays on the corner route. Okay, um, the reason why it's good against cover two, because if a corner's got the flats, he's going to sit on um, the, the out route and the free safety's got to get over the top. That's a tough route to get over the top and defend the corner route. If you throw it on time and on rhythm, you should complete that ball a lot. Okay. Um, and the out route, let's say the corner decides he's not going to honor his cover two responsibility and he's going to drop. So you're basically reading the corner. Is he dropping? Hit the, uh, hit the uh, out route. Is he sitting? Hit the corner route. Okay. Um, now, if it is man-to-man -man coverage, then it's a simple one-to-two read. Read the corner to the out. And why is it good against man? Because if you run these routes really well and precise and hard, you can you should be open. You should be able to make a break and get open if the ball is delivered on time. Um, Clemson does do a really nice job covering these routes and uh, just kind of shows that Pitt didn't cover them as well or at least the quarterback wasn't as confident in getting it out on time um, to the receivers. And so he ends up throwing the ball um, out of bounds, which is fine. You know, first play of the game, uh, I, you know, you can imagine um, the matchup and the stress and the intensity of the entire uh, stadium coming down on you. Um, this is a safe play to call first play of the game because a lot of guys, they need one play, okay, just to get the feel for it. So anyway, I've got a lot more comments in the comments below. Make sure you read through the playbook and enjoy those as well. And let's move on to the next play.